Hey, you all, a case of living here. As you all know, the book, Every Twin Flame Life is three stories. Order, chaos, and return to order is getting ready to come out on 11-11. And also, the A Case of Living podcast is launching um, any day now. So this is a short to well, promote both of them. And I want to talk to you a little bit about, in this particular short, one of the chaoses that can occur on a twin flame journey. Now, this particular chaos is um, the chaos of we're supposed to be. Yeah, the chaos of twin flame is supposed to be. Now, this particular chaos was not actually covered in the book, but it's one that's come up since. You see, when you're trying to talk to anyone about twin flame, but most especially the twin flame, your other half, your counterpart, and you start using phrases like, we're meant to be, we're supposed to be, it's by design, those sorts of things. What can be heard is have to, got to. I'm not getting to choose. I'm being told what to do. It can become a real push-pull, a battle of the wills, if you will, which isn't fair, but it's understandable whenever you're first awakening to all of it. It's when you haven't been at it a while, when you don't don't have all the background, the insight, et cetera, et cetera. That can be an initial response is, um, what do you mean I'm supposed to do this? Or it can also seem like maybe they don't really love me. Maybe they want to be with me because they think they're supposed to. So those, those type of things can come into play and that can cause great chaos. It can cause Friction it can cause the running chasing to happen. It, it can cause all sorts of uncomfortableness and awkwardness and more problems with twin flame actually getting together. So this is the thing to understand. It's not about have to, supposed to. It's not that kind of, well, you should. It's not a societal programming. This is the way it is because we're trying to control you, tell you what to do, et cetera, et cetera. Think of it like, you know, every day the sun comes up, the moon comes up. Every day the trees, they continue to grow, flowers bloom, the grass is beautiful. Every day the waters flow. It's all by design and it's all beautiful and harmonious, just the way it's supposed to be. It's that kind of supposed to. It's because it is the design that is of universal love. It has nothing to do with control. It has nothing to do with someone being told what to do. It has nothing to do with you're doing it because, well, you feel like you have to. It's like when music is your passion, you're a guitarist or a pianist and you play not because well, I'm supposed to be a guitar player, I'm supposed to be a pianist, I'm supposed to be a writer, but I was born a writer. I was born a guitarist. I play piano because it's who I am. You see the difference. So that's one way you can explain what the difference is. Because that is the difference. You see, Yes, twin flame is by design. You were one being at the time of creation. So all of your chakras <laughs> by nature are aligned. They're, they're the same. Then for the co-creation that is happening here on the earth plane of existence, at this time, you divided into twin flame. So we're at a point in time when we're trying to get everything back in resonant energy. And I'm not going to get into what all that means with twin flame, but twin flame is a huge part of that. And you're the most resonant energy there is by design. You were one. You divided for the expansion of consciousness, for a whole new way to co-create. And now this is a moment for you to not only do that, but do that and restore the planet 
back to the harmony that it's supposed to be in, the high vibrational frequency it's meant to be in. So that's even a more beautiful thing about the design of it all. So it's like the sun coming up every morning and the moon and the stars. It's not supposed to, it's supposed to. And as far as the chaos it causes when you discuss this with family or friends or strangers, or if you try to discuss it with your twin, you can't worry about that. Some people are not going to understand and you, you just can't have the discussions with them. This is about energy management. This is about understanding, where do I put my energetic bandwidth? If you can't get through to someone, if it's going to be an argument or cause chaotic energy, don't put your energetic bandwidth there. It doesn't matter what they believe anyway. If they're not in resonant energy with you, don't use your energetic bandwidth there. Let them believe what they want to. No matter how much energy you put there, no matter how beautifully you put it, if they're not in resonant energy, or if they dug their heels in and determined not to be, you're not going to change their mind. So don't use your energy to try, and why would you want to? When we have to convince anyone of something, that is a 3D behavioral modality, behavioral style. And believe me, it's one that I was steeped in. Still catch myself trying to do it sometimes. If I could just explain it to them. I'm a teacher. I mean, that's what I do is I explain things to people. So if I could just find the right words, if I could just get them to sit still long enough, if I could just draw them a word picture, if I could just, if I could, you know, you can't. Not if they're not in the energy to hear it. Not if their level of consciousness isn't there yet. Not if their energy is not open to it. Not if, not if, not if. So you be you, the one and only you. You put your energy every day into being in frequency yourself. And when that opening is truly there, one that will really work, you will attract them in for that. It will be resonant energy. You won't have to do any arm twisting to get them to listen, any of that stuff. And it won't be chaotic energy. It won't be chaos when you're trying to do it. And you will have real results. Now it may be, but just because they come in and listen, they don't integrate it right then. That's okay. They still came in to listen. And that doesn't mean that you're holding court somewhere waiting for everyone to come to you to hear what you have to say. And I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying you go on with your life. You go on being you, the one and only you, putting your energy into doing that. True self-care. How do I want to feel? Who do I want to be? What do I want to experience? How do I want to be treated? Oh, yeah. I'm getting a heart chakra. I'm getting the transmission. All my chakras, I'm getting it. I know. Okay. Putting myself in that energy. Treating myself that way. That's the energy I'm putting out in the world. I'm going forward. I'm using my energetic bandwidth for that. I'm being me. No, I didn't stop at how do I want. I said I'm putting my energy out in the world. You see how we want to be treated. All of those things. You don't stop there. We put that out in the world because everything is relationship. And then that's what sets up the positive energy loops that brings those people into us, those who want to hear what we have to say. And then when the people that you're wanting to communicate with about it are ready, when they're in resonant energy for it, when they're in frequency for it, when they're opening their energetic field to it, here you are. Here I am. This is unconditional love. It's not me with a list of, and I love you so much. I expect you to sit down and listen to me and get this and change your mind. That's not unconditional love. There's a whole list of conditions you just gave. Nope. You've gone on your way. You mutually respect them. You're letting them be them until you being you, they open their energetic field to it and they're like, you know, what's it you want to tell me? And here they come. And you're like, oh yeah, I can make time now in my energetic bandwidth to do that. And you tell them. And then you respect them, mutual respect to do with it what they do with it. 
because that's their choice too, the sovereignty of self. So that's how we handle the chaos of, are they my twin flame because they're supposed to be? I don't even know what that means, supposed to be. I don't think I want to be with somebody because I'm supposed to be. How do I know they love me? How do I know they're not with me just because they're supposed to be? Because it's not what it is at all. The sun doesn't rise in the morning because it's supposed to. It does it because it's supposed to. You don't, you don't see the sunset over the ocean and find yourself with a sense of awe because you're supposed to. It's because you see it and everything in you knows this is, this is how things are supposed to be. what twin flames but until people are ready to hear that you're not supposed to be trying to tell them that's not being a resonant energy that's chaotic you being frequency that's what we're all supposed to be doing always whether we're talking twin flame any relationship that's the reason why teaching twin flame now is so important twin flame is about bringing everything back into order about bringing us into resonance but you don't have to be on a twin flame journey know about your twin flame or any of that stuff and for god's sakes don't go looking for one if you hadn't found it yet don't worry about it be a frequency that's the job you have here that's the job you have there are a lot of twins here now and they're being the model for all of this so we need to know about that we need to know about that up front so if you stumble into that, you know what to do with it. But regardless, whatever the relationship, you handle it the same. And this is how we go back to order from chaos. And this is how every day, regardless of what kind of journey you're on or where the level of consciousness of others around you happens to be, you can live in great big capital letters. The case of